Hi, my name is Mads Barnkamp. I'm from Denmark and I have been doing electronics uh, as a hobby for about 10 years. I run the kaiserpowerelectronics.dk blog and also with this YouTube channel associated to it. I primarily do with high voltage, high current and Tesla coil building and I have done quite a few from small to large. And I also do a lot of teardowns in expensive, exotic, decommissioned equipment. So I hope you will enjoy this uh, video and a huge thanks to Dave for giving me this opportunity to reach out to a much larger audience for which I think uh, my channel will be interesting. Hello. I'm Mass Bankup and this is Kaiser Power Electronics. This is a Sony color video camera model BVP7AP. And if you have watched any broadcast TV transmission live or recorded in the 90s, there is a good chance that this little baby was used in the production or the live transmission. It features a huge uh, Fujinan 8.5 to 119mm lens. And it's a real heavy camera, it's very big, and as you can see, the sheer size of it. And this isn't even the whole story. This is just a camera and a communication unit. There is no parts for recording or storing any kind of data in this. That would all sit in the central control unit that I unfortunately can only show you a picture of. And I have made this camera run alone uh, by just finding out what uh, voltage and where to put it in. Let's take a closer look at the, the camera itself. Here we can see the uh, marking plate with the model number and the uh, DC voltage. The back part here says that it's only to be used with the central control unit 354, 355. At the front we have the uh, Fujinon 14x uh, zoom lens which comes with a uh, nice uh, handle for uh, zooming uh, with a uh, motor assist. Here on the other side we can see the nice uh, 3 CCD shield. Now uh, all around uh, the camera there is so many knobs and buttons and so on that here at the front uh, of the viewfinder. Here are all the controls for uh, setting uh, brightness and contrast and peaking and so on for the uh, the viewfinder but also has uh, some audio controls for the built-in microphone. At the underside here we have some uh, different uh, white balance settings. Camera, shutter, gain, output. Also uh, another white panel, balance uh, switch and uh, up under here there is a selector for um, color uh, filter uh, temperature and hiding again up here is a uh, shutter on off uh, button. Along all these uh, which are mainly associated to the video part then here at the back is the uh, intercom um, controls. And this goes on both sides where it also has a plug for the external microphone that the interviewer would use. Then at the back here we have all the connectors that goes out to the CCU. Now this had a uh, power cable and then another two uh, cables here for uh, the CCU and one for VTR. I have not been able to find a price tag on this camera, but I am guessing that it was not low at all. It is a modularly built uh, camera, so the whole uh, unit here at the back that uh, communicates with the central control unit only sits here with three screws. Then you can actually take the whole unit off, and I think you could replace it with a recording module, so you could do full, uh, full mobile uh, recordings. Now I have really uh, looked forward to show, the, show you this uh, part uh, that is inside because 
it was absolutely nothing like anything I expected. I did not expect to find a small rack mount computer inside a camera. But here it is. Small, beautiful cards, all custom um, tasks that we have the uh, little CPU board sitting at the bottom. There is uh, some uh, audio for the intercom amplifiers. Another, this says uh, red, green, blue. So perhaps a little test pattern generator. And over here we have everything that has to do with the uh, sensor for the, uh, the image generation, which is hiding behind this little black cover. Here we can see the two PAL cards, as this is a uh, European camera. But I'm, I'm completely uh, amazed about how, uh, how, beautiful, how beautifully built this uh, system are. So you can take out these small cards here. This is the first PAL card. And I really can't tell much about uh, this right now. But you see it has a little uh, bus connector. And it goes down here at uh, a small bus connector at the uh, motherboard at the bottom. And I assume that the PS card that we have over here at the, the right side is the power supply. But what the other here does has a lot with the black setting, test level gain, gamma, white clipping, FLR, PED. These are some uh, shorts, shortings that I do not know. But I'm really looking forward to taking this further apart and uh, show you what it is. And I think that from a, I can just show you an example of uh, the image quality that this camera can do right now, just up here in the right uh, edge, uh, right corner of the picture. That it is not impressive. The sensors are, are not doing that well. It was only made for 700 lines of uh, TV uh, resolution, and by today's standards, this is nothing to really uh, use for anything. But I did uh, find a cheap uh, PAL to USB um, converter on eBay, and I will see if I can find a uh, PAL output on one of th one of these cards and uh, see if we can get this to uh, actually stream something live to a modern PC. The racks are now empty and this camera is absolutely madness. It, it's incredible how much stuff they have gotten into so little space and with so many wires going all over the place. I mean, assembling this have not been an easy job. There is simply just wires going everywhere. So over here we have a uh, high voltage supply which I'm not sure if these uh, CCD sensors require a higher voltage because the camera is supplied by 12 volt DC. But um, yeah, I'm sure we'll find out. So I take out all the boards and let's take a look at, the, look at them. Here we have a uh, the uh, processor board. I'm not sure if this is just for the CCU or also the uh, other uh, analog um, image uh, boards. But uh, it features a small microcontroller and a EEPROM, which uh, says sign video broadcast television equipment to rent higher. So uh, perhaps this camera was only uh, rented at first and then uh, later bought out. Then here we have uh, the two boards that was marked MD and uh, C level. Um, not completely sure what they do. They have a few tremors but uh, also has a 36 megahertz uh, crystal here. And you see the uh, IC, it's a 74F175PC. So I can look that up. Up here we have uh, the two microphone uh, amplifier boards. 
This one is for the intercom and this one is uh, probably for the external microphone. Then we get over to the analog um, image boards. First over here we have the uh, power supply. It's a uh, old switch mode power supply. And a little funny thing, see the two tran transistors sitting up here. Not really enough space uh, for them to have uh, good enough cooling sitting next to next to each other. So they just bent good around with a little uh, insulation on the legs. Then here we have the uh, this board was marked EN and PAL, and this uh, contains a, a lot of the uh, says PR and also ha has a lot of balance parts but not near the amount that we see on this board. It's absolutely insane having to uh, adjust these boards uh, when they have first been built and uh, are going in for calibration. Must, been have, must have been some, some job to do that. And over here we have the first PAL board and uh, it actually has a, uh, I think it's a crystal for uh, the PAL frequency. So hopefully on the, this board I can find uh, some test points or something else where I can find a clean PAL signal to uh, inject into my little USB converter. Now over here I also removed the cover uh, or the print that was sitting over the uh, sensors. Here we can see uh, the sensor board marked G for green and you have a uh, R for red and B for blue. Now all these white wires then connects down to the different sensors that we cannot see right now. But I will remove the lens assembly and then we can take a look inside the uh, sensors. Now the uh, lens is taking off and here you can see one of the reasons why I'm doing a teardown on this. Then here on the UV filter it has a uh, I don't know what you call it, glass pest, or there is a, this camera has been sitting outside in bad weather, it has taken a lot of rain. So uh, unfortunately there is now some something between the layers in the UV filter and it's completely useless uh, to get a, a proper picture through it. And there is no way to really clean it or get a new one. I could probably find something and cut it to fit but I'm not sure I would get a good picture uh, afterwards and even then the resolution of the camera is simply not good enough to uh, to keep it but it seems that I will have to remove the, these uh, screws and I will see if I can re take the whole uh, front off and get into the sensor boards this is just a uh, incredible amount of wires going everywhere I know I said it before when we looked at the uh, the main board at the bottom, but, but this is just ridiculous. There's an absolutely ridiculous amount of wires so entwined that it's almost impossible to get this taken apart. As you can see, the whole head of the camera is right now in a, uh, yeah, let's just call it the exploded view. But what we have uh, revealed is uh, up here we have a uh, 29.5 megahertz uh, crystal sitting along with uh, something that is shielded uh, beneath this um, little uh, golden metal plate. Over here it uh, seems like a power distribution board up to the uh, three sensors. And the uh, brown uh, funnel uh, thing here is the uh, optical uh, color filters where we have the uh, red board and the uh, green board and the blue board here for the three different color sensors that is all uh, glued together in uh, in this assembly i don't think i can get this further apart without uh, risking to uh, to break anything and I really wouldn't do that. I assumed that the uh, two back plates would only reveal the back side of the uh, back planes and I did wonder where the controller for the whole uh, back plane actually was. 
And here it is. It's a Hitachi HD 6305, which is a CMOS microcontroller. It's a 8-bit CMOS uh, MCU with the 2 kilobytes of uh, ROM and 128 bytes of RAM. Now uh, this has uh, 31 I.O. pins and this is what along with the massive amount of uh, custom parts, custom boards here, which is stamped Sony, uh, makes up the backplane. And it just keeps getting better and better and better. This camera is absolutely stuffed with parts. <laughs> I, I, I just I, I can, can't uh, describe this anymore because it just keeps popping out from every corner and so on. So this is the uh, backplane board of the um, intercom and uh, CCU unit. And this basically encodes uh, the um, the signal into a uh, special uh, high frequency uh, combined signal of audio and video and so on to the CCU unit where uh, decoding is being done and then over to the uh, PAL format again. So maybe I could also here at the inputs uh, find uh, something I can use uh, at the uh, PAL to USB converter. Or else, uh, I did also notice this, because this I actually missed uh, early on, that it has a little plug here that says test out, and it has a BNC plug. Who knows, maybe this is just a PAL output. But taking a view again, massive amount of wires going everywhere. and. Unfortunately, I do not have been able to find a manual for this. Uh, every site that has one would want me to pay for for it to uh, to download it. So I did not want to uh, waste money on that. But this has really been a been a pleasure to take apart and look at because this is a stunning uh, piece of uh, engineering. So I will get it all together again, and uh, hopefully, no parts are missing, no small screws. Um, and yeah it will run again. This is kind of the uh, test setup. It's uh, set up just with uh, a uh, adapter. Then I'm using a cheap uh, DVR to USB uh, converter that I found uh, on eBay. It came with a lovely uh, software here called the TVR which also came with a uh, serial number in a text file so that is probably seriously legit and then I have my uh, green screen so uh, let's see how this camera really looks I will use my good friend here as a uh, let's say it color test on the uh, camera so here you can see me film from the front front camera of a modern smartphone but uh, now let's see how it looks like uh, on the old analog video recorder. The resolution on the recording here is uh, 720 times 576 pixels. It's encoded in MPEG-2. And uh, this is uh, given in a whopping 3.6 uh, GB data per hour. So, yes, this software actually gives the data rate per hour. So, how, how do you like the color difference between the, uh, the smartphone camera and then the old analog here? It's suddenly, uh, or certainly much more soft. Let's put the balloon down and let's see that there is really an issue about setting up a uh, white balance probably and because it's all manually controlled you have to set up your scene right and I really can't see how anybody would have worked with this. It quite takes a cameraman when you can compare to a phone camera like this where you just push record you get an instant good result it takes uh, care of everything for you because this is just a massive load of work uh, to make anything Good, but there is also that little difference that the screens that we are looking at today are so much better than what this is originally designed for. So, 
we can't really compare it, but at least we can see what it can produce on today's uh, hardware and if it's really useful for anything. If, if you, you made, made it this far in the video, I will now present you for all the opportunity to own this camera. All you would have to do is that you go to eevblog.com forum and you find the uh, appropriated uh, thread. I will put a link down in the description of the video. And here you can have a chance uh, to uh, win this camera. If you have a cool project that you would like to use it for or take it apart and build something completely new, which I would really like to see because as a whole piece, I don't think this camera has much to offer in today's uh, digital world. But uh, please do uh, comment on what kind of project you would like to use it for and it can be yours. There is however that little catch that this is a heavy camera so you would have to pay me for uh, shipping it to you. And that is uh, in around maybe 50, 60 euros anywhere in Europe. So be aware of that, please ask me about the uh, shipping details if that is a problem. But I hope that somebody will bring new use to this camera. I hope you enjoyed the teardown, I hope you enjoyed seeing the camera itself, I hope you enjoyed seeing what it can do. And I especially hope that you really enjoyed that the encoder is not just not working that well. So. The image is a little stuttering and the sound keeps lagging behind and so on. So that software that follows with the DVR to USB is completely utter useless. But I'm not going to try to use any other software because for me this project is over. This camera is looking for a new owner and a new future. So until next time, see ya.